Arby's Gone Wild. Woo! Number nine. Arby's Gone Wild. Number nine. Here we go. And I got a special guest. Mrs. RV with Joe joins us today. Let's get straight into it. Sounds good. So this first one came in from an anonymous source who spotted this truck in Utah. They saw it first at a campground. Then they saw it at a Walmart. You'll note that it has a green grass roof. I'm guessing the dude can get up there. And kudos to the guy for having a Starlink there. Uh, I do actually kind of like the look of the corrugated uh, metal in the wood, even though it looks a little funky. Uh, I do kind of like the look of it. And again, it shows you that, you know, you can build it yourself. You'll notice, Johanna, the ladder has got to be pretty tall. It's one thing the anonymous source noted was... Uh, how tall the doors are here, so. I was gonna say, I don't think that's a standard issue. Yeah, definitely not. But this anonymous source also sent us this cool semi. Now, when you see a semi like this with these really long sleeper beds, they're actually RVs on the inside. I decided to look up the company on here and found other pictures of the inside of this actual rig or, or of this type of rig from this company. You can see it has a regular RV sink, it has a fridge, it has a microwave, it has a bed. It's she goes so um, <laughs> it's got a stove uh it's actually got a murphy bed and again when you see these types of big rigs on the road know that they're effectively rvs on the back of a semi that kitchen is slightly bigger than ours <laughs> slightly is, yeah well we've got an ember <laughs> i it's not for known for their kitchens no th we this, didn't get that for that this truck has a little more weight capacity than our single axle ember a couple pounds maybe. sweet pea sent me this picture she actually spotted it going down the road this was in phoenix on Interstate 10, and I don't know if you understand these types of trailers, this is supposed to be folded down. You're not supposed to drive down the road with this folded up. I'm guessing they had maybe some problem folding it down, or maybe somebody didn't inform them. I don't know. But uh, yeah, if you have a pop-up camper, pop it down before you drive. I think it says it in the name. It, you'd think, you'd think, you'd think they know what they were doing. Thanks to Tom W. for sending me this uh, trailer that he unfortunately slammed into one of those yellow poles at the gas station. You might remember a few episodes back where I showed a few folks hitting the gas pump pole. I've even done it once myself. I showed some classic YouTubers who had done it really bad and just tore up their trailer. And that's the exact same thing he did here. Those darn yellow posts they have at the gas stations. They just kill RVs, man. And this time he took out his whole wheel, took off the hub, Broke the axle. But they put those yellow poles there so you don't hit the gas tank things. It would be worse to hit the gas pumps. That is true. I gotta, I gotta admit. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. Sorry. But luckily for this guy, there was a repair shop just one mile away. And he was able to get it fixed in a short period of time. So Butch H sent us this one. I'm not sure if this was him or one he saw. But this is one where it was clearly overloaded. And the frame actually broke on the uh, trailer. So, yeah. It's supposed to be like this, people. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, you can see that. That really took a dump. So this one kind of sucks. Heidi P sent this to me. This is actually her brother's truck, which overheated in the Idaho mountains. The family all got out and they watched everything burn, the truck, the ATV, and the RV. They're totally safe. Yeah, it's important to say that everybody got out, so nobody was hurt here. But clearly, you know, I'm sure the entire RVing with Joe community's heart goes out to this. You all join me in and just, you know, feeling the pain on this type of rig, right? This is all of our worst fear out there. So, uh, Heidi, if you see this, please give your brother our best. And I really hope the insurance company came through on this. So Rich B sent this in to me. Uh, it's a build that he actually did on his 2010 Freightliner. Uh, so this is a full big rig that he went and built out. You can see here he built it from scratch, stripped completely down. And wait till you see the final product. You can pull from the catalog of all the existing RV parts out there. You're only really building the walls and the basic infrastructure. And here's the final output. The, the inside looks like it was done by a manufacturer, straight up. This is a real sweet rig. And the storage galore on this. This is basically turning a semi into a super c or a super class c that is nice i'm telling you the more and more i, I think so huge more though. and more i think our retirement rig should be something we build and not something we buy so rebel with a cause here uh, i'm not sure which european country this is out of i guess that's an eu license plate uh rebel with a cause if you see this tell us where you're from and uh i can see on the back here that uh this particular camper likes to chill spicoli style <laughs> Love it. Hey, by the way, with that last video, we added a thousand subscribers. So thank you very much if you're one of our new subscribers. That was a real treat. I really appreciate it. The weird thing is we get tens and thousands of views, but we only have what now? 7,000 subscribers. 
If you haven't already, please click the subscribe button below. It really helps us out. Yes, please. So the next thing came in from Stephen O. Thanks for sending this picture in. I guess he saw it up at the uh, ski slopes. This is called the Ski Bum Gamper. And, you know, he clearly took this old classic, you know, aluminum style shell that I'm guessing he didn't build from scratch and then dropped it on top of a work truck. Uh, but the, that, what do you call those? Uh, the, the tool tool truck, tool bed. What do you call those? A tool truck bed? If there's another name for that truck, please comment below. Uh, is clearly, you know, it's mounted in and on top of there. But even the tool truck bed's not quite sized for this rig. Who cares? Hope you had fun skiing. Thanks for sending this in, Stephen. Alan sent in this classic Ford uh, camper van here. This is actually, I guess, what they call a toter home. It was originally built for, uh, you know, like carrying racing trailers, things like that. Let's let him talk about it here. Right over here is a 1979 Ford L700. This is a massive, massive truck. Back in the day, this was used as a toter home and uh, probably had like a stacker trailer behind it. It went to all kinds of races. So we can start just from front to back. Something that I thought was cool is it's got the blue oval. A lot of the trucks from 79, I've never really seen the blue oval on it. So to me, that's something that's really cool. We got a 460 big block with a five speed. It's got a four barrel carburetor on it. It's got like new-ish seats. And over here, this is like, uh, I guess this is just part of the cabin. So what, the reason why I really like this is this is where my kids can hang out. So while I'm driving, this is where they could sit, they could play games, maybe I'll install a TV. And then back here is where the fun is. Basically now it's like a full RV. It's got this cute kitchen with, you know, some live edge and stuff. I mean, so as you can see over here, this is the fresh water tank. That's the gray water tank. So thank you, Alan D for sending this in. And this is gonna get my tip of the hat, RVing with Joe, gold star award for coolest Ford of this particular episode. This looks like a real good, solid piece of Ford. And also I recommend you check out Ford ERA's full video on this. I'll put a link below. They've got all kinds of cool Ford related content, all built around the Ford F-Series truck. You'll probably see a few more from me from these guys in the future. Awesome channel. The Swaggies. Australia in the house. So here we have a subscriber from Australia who spotted this homemade camper on the way to the pub. It was in a small town called Kuma while he was on a bus tour through the area. And since he's out in Australia, he really loves seeing our channel for all the weird USA combinations. America. Thanks to Chris, the stick shift savant, who sent us this homemade camper. Don't have a lot of information about it, but it shows yet again that all you need is some wood and some skill. Little ingenuity. Little ingenuity, your own truck. Thanks for sending this in, Chris. We're going to go straight to Turducken. Anyway, let's laugh. Yeah, it's time for Turducken. <laughs> Every time I see this, I chuckle just a little bit. So this one from Mark H, he has the loader in at 32,000 pounds, the trailer at 7,500 pounds. He tows a geo tracker behind all of this. And then he said, although it's not in the picture here, that he pulls a motorcycle trailer with fuel behind the geo tracker. This is construction geo tracker motorcycle Turducken. <laughs> And Paul C. sent this in. He apologizes. It's not the best photo in the world. If you look a little closer, you'll look to see that this is actually a fifth wheel that's been converted to a pull trailer with some sort of I-beam welded in there. It amazes me. I don't know what possesses people to drive something like this down the road. And another classic truck, and I'm seeing more and more of these where they're not only double towing, but they're double towing two RVs here. I guess big families, families bring friends. So Phone Around sent this to me. He said he just wanted to show his turducken recipe. He tows it all over Wyoming. The big camper is for him and his wife and the small ones for the kids. That makes a lot of sense. And I'm guessing it's legal in Wyoming to tow something like this. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But she said, <laughs> I like the whole wagon circle set up with his buddies here at the gas station. <laughs> you know, you, you got to keep it tight. Keep it tight when you're on the road. <laughs> we got classic tow truck turducken sent in by Melissa L. Thanks for sending the dust. She saw this on the I-95 Maine. Oh, I thought it was Florida Maine on the other end. Uh, in mile marker 68, there's a pickup truck sitting on a flatbed tow truck, which is being hauled by a land dolly, she calls it, being hauled by a tractor. Thanks a lot, Melissa. Now, Paul K. sent this into me. If you remember my last video, I actually had another pick of this very rig. That's the funny thing is more and more of you folks send me in pictures. I'm getting many people sending me different pictures of the same rig as it travels around America. So in this case, Paul K. sent me this picture, which shows us a little better than the last one, what's actually on the end of that trailer. It's one of those four wheel bicycles that you kind of can rent usually down at the boardwalk. Uh, and then there is just an endless pile of bikes on that trailer. So it's pretty clear here that there's just a lot of people traveling together on this rig. 
I had somebody else comment in the comments on that last one too, saying they do the same thing. They tow a whole extra pop-up and it's just so that their kids can bring their friends. So I guess that's why RVs tow RVs. The Tyranny Response Team sent me in a few different pictures. Here's a quick clip of the Tyranny Response Team's trailer. They can tell us more. The camper is a um, TLRV um, camper. Works good. It's a 22. It's uh, by no means the best quality camper, but it was reasonable in price and weight-wise, it was good. It's only about 2,200 pounds dry, so uh, that's not bad. The uh, the way I mounted it on there is I had to build a platform on the bottom. I think that ended up being about eight inches tall. It's the white part just above the stickers. And I did that with uh, two by sixes and three quarter inch um, treated plywood. That where it says Polaris, there's some storage underneath there. You can open that up and I've got some tables and chairs and stuff like that. And I'm getting more emails and comments saying that these are sometimes called crawler haulers. So as much as I'm hearing some of these folks are calling these like gooseneck campers, I'm also having some people in the comments talk to me about crawler haulers. I'm gonna do a little more research into this, but apparently some of these are built like this so that somebody can carry their crawler or their uh, you know, tractor or something like that in the back and have their RV with them and just keep it all in one trailer. You got your ATV, you got your trailer, and you got your truck. You can see someone also being like a four hire skid steer on the back of there. There's a whole lot of reasons that maybe they would haul something other than a recreational uh, vehicle. So, But I'm seeing an increasing amount of these. Is this something that's actually being sold at dealerships as a new type of RV, or is this all custom order, custom build kind of stuff? I'll put a link to their YouTube. Why don't you say it? We'll put a link to the Tyranny Response Team's YouTube channel below. Michael E sent us in this picture of his setup. Looks like a nice clean setup. And he's got multiple like ATV and off-road vehicles there on that back trailer. Again, if you measure your traducan by number of tires, this one's getting a pretty high score. That's a lot of tires. A lot of tires. And he's been towing this for seven years. For seven years, yeah. That's a long time. Well used. Well done. I'm ready to go camping. <laughs> and like Michael and everyone else who's been gracious enough to share their pictures with us, you can do the same. So if you have some cool pictures that you've taken out there or of your own build you want to share with us, please send it to rvingwithjoe at gmail.com. Drop a few notes about what it is. And, you know, if it's a trailer you built, let's see the inside and show it off. That's nice seeing the inside of the trailers because it really takes this whole process to another level. If I'd love to share it out here. I can't quite share everything I've been getting, but I'm trying to choose as much as I can and work it into the future videos. So send it my way. I'll give you props if you do. And some of you folks are doing some great work out there. Exactly. I wish I had the skill to put some together some of the stuff you guys do. Well, send us your pictures so we can be jealous. <laughs> Here's another example of some folks sending me some interesting pictures. Herbie here showed us his own turducken style setup here where he's got this first one that he actually has himself. He said he put together, you know, this yellow trailer dolly style thing, but he only had to do it to move it for around 15 miles. So you wonder why people put these together. Sometimes it's the only way they have to move a fifth wheel and they're only going 15 miles. So that's certainly not like you're doing a cross country trip. Pretty reasonable. Especially if you're rural. And then the red suburban. Yeah. And the red suburban with the dolly and the fifth wheel was a relative to some old vet in the RV park that he used to manage. Yeah. Apparently this dolly was put together like overnight just so they could drag this thing from Montana to Washington. Wow. That's more than 15 miles. That's a little more than 15 miles. So uh, hello. Yeah. But you know, <laughs> he's got some straps there holding down some stuff. So oh, that's not going it's anywhere. Not going anywhere. Right now. What's, what's actually trippier about this one is it's it's it looks like it's a gooseneck style so mm. usually when you see these you know they're fifth wheel style but right. here he's actually built some custom built gooseneck and then bolted that into the trailer man this must have just been my parts laying around the farm <laughs> and uh, as somebody who's new to the strap game does it matter what color they are yellow straps are safer okay good to know All right, yellow straps are safer right good to know oh that one is really cool there we go and herbie's last pick was this Hurston trailer. I'm not sure this is technically an RV, but I don't care. Anyone who's going to soup up a Hurst, it'd be cool to have a Hurst just to drive around, right? That is one dark, spooky thing to have as a car. So, Herbie, we love you, man. Thanks for sending us all this stuff. Thanks to everybody who sent us pictures. Don't forget to send us pictures. Please subscribe to the channel. You can oh, even sure. get notifications if you want. I'm morally against people, dude. Make yeah. sure you subscribe, like, but don't click notifications. I think notifications are bad. You don't need YouTube in your phone ring just telling you I got a new video out. So subscribe. Don't worry about notifications. Okay, well, 
I do that for some of the channels that really? I follow, I don't know. but I will not impress that upon your viewers. But <laughs> you can also share this. So please also think about sharing some of these videos. Spring is almost here. So make sure whether you're going to go camping, whether you're going to go RVing, or just going out for a day trip, make sure you get busy living. All right, so let's stop recording. Let's hope it's recorded. <laughs> that one sucked.